everyone, I'm Trusting44 and welcome to the, once again, another Let's Play of sort of Neverwinter Nights. We did complete the main campaign of Neverwinter Nights, but as I said in the end of the last episode, there are two more campaigns, two expansions that came out afterwards. There were also many premium modules, not sure if I'll do it. But, we're gonna move on to the next one. Shadows of Undrintai. Now, it is possible to import characters from previous campaigns into whatever you're doing. And while we could, theoretically, bring Ken Daniels into Shadows of Undrintai, Shadows is made to start from level 1. So we're gonna make someone new. I'm going to skip through most of the character creation process and just go to the end. I'll be back. Alright, I managed to go ahead and make a character. Another fighter. I decided to name him Liam Johnson. Eh, it's a name. Should work. Slight change to, compared to the last character. Well, before I made it specifically so that he would be focusing on katana and that kind of thing, I'm building this one a little different. I'm aiming for something else that I'll be going for later. So we have a little bit higher in... So we have a lower constitution, but in exchange we've got a higher intelligence and a higher dexterity. Which is fine. Because of the higher intelligence, we have extra points in skills, so we have points in discipline, lore, persuade, of course, and search. We've also got a couple feats. We grab Silver Palm so we get a bonus to Persuade checks. Thug for more bonus to Persuade. And we're actually focusing on the Long Sword instead of the Katana. And no spells. So, let's begin Liam Johnson's tale. Hilltop. One of many small villages that dot the most remote regions of the northern wildlands, known as the Silver Marches. Few would choose so cold and inhospitable land to make their home. Only those seeking a new life or to escape their past. It is in Hilltop that your mentor, Master Drogon, chose to settle after a lifetime of adventure. Here, he would pass on his knowledge to you, and a select few others with promise. It is here that evil comes in the shadows, and behind it, a sinister purpose that will see your own promise either realized in full, or extinguished forever. How very ominous. Let us put our things on. We may sell the woodsman's outfit. We don't need that. We don't really have anything I can use. Any special abilities or anything. A footlocker. Ah, we have a few things here. 50 coins. Focus crystal. Though rather common, these crystals are highly sought for use in controlling, directing, and powering magic spells and items. One crystal is consumed every time use is made of Mistra's hand. This ring is one of many forged by Drogon Drogonson. Drogon retired after a long life of, advent of adventure and took to training young would-be adventurers how, how not to get killed. He gave each of them a ring that would teleport them back to him if they found themselves in mortal peril. To power this ring, the user must possess a focus crystal. The focus crystal is consumed during the teleportation. So this item here... This is specifically just like the Stone of Recall, except we're limited. Let's see. Journal. This is your journal, which chronicles your life at Drogon's Academy. From the day you set foot in the door to last eve's entry, all of your experiences are contained within. One section of the journal talks about your interaction with the other apprentices. Xanos, the half-orc sorcerer, has a superior attitude that rubs most of the other apprentices the wrong way. 
Dorna is a dwarven rogue who loves to incite arguments between Xanos and the third apprentice, Misha. Misha is a human paladin of Mistra, whose vision of the world is limited to black and white with nothing in between. You are the fourth and senior apprentice, and Drogon has always held the respect for you and your abilities. Lately, Drogon has begun to seek new apprentices, as your term here has nearly reached completion. Your final examination will soon be upon you. And finally, scale of discipline. It was a fairly straightforward test. All you had to do was run to the top of the hill and grab an item on a pedestal, then return it to Drogon. It was the twenty heavily muscled orcs waiting to knock you back down the hill, and the strap that held your hands behind your back that gave the task its difficulty. The first few were easy enough to dodge around, but they got closer and closer together until it was only your bullheaded determination that kept you on your feet. When the assignment was completed, your body was sore, but the red scale was dropped from your mouth into Drogon's waiting hands. After cutting the strap around your arms, Drogon explained that the scale had the magical ability to increase your discipline for a short time during battle, but only one time each day. It was a suitable reward for a grueling task. Only usable by fighter, and we get a bonus to our... De well, that, every day. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm ever going to actually use it. Focus Crystal, going to hold on to that, and Scale of Discipline, hold on to that. Alright, let us move on. Hello. Aha! You're here. Tell me, surely you have heard how our dear Misha fared in her last test? I have had enough of your jibe, Xanos. You would have done no better. On the contrary, dear lady, I tend to do exactly what Master Drogon asks me to do. If he says to rescue the goblin child, then I rescue the goblin child. It is not so difficult. Hmm. I somehow doubt Master Drogon would ask you to rescue anything that he didn't expect you to rob first. <laughs> you are the aspiring thief amongst us, little Dorna, not I. But a goblin is an evil creature, child or no. How can I be expected to lend it aid? It was not a fair test of my abilities. Ah, one of those classic issues. That's basically the most classic of all tests and problems that is brought up in any Dungeons & Dragons situation. Master Drogon wanted you to rescue a goblin? Why? Master Drogon tests us all, Liam so that we reach the potential we came to his school to achieve. Your tests are different than the rest of ours, naturally, but the goal is the same. Master Drogon is a very wise man. They say he was a great adventurer before he retired. That is what I hope to benefit from, not his wisdom. I don't know. Perhaps there is a lesson in Master Drogon's test I, that I have not yet considered. You'll learn in time, Misha. Don't worry about it. Thank you for your kindness, Liam. I suspect that Master Drogon will never hold me with the regard he has for you, however. Bah! Who cares how the dwarf regards them? I came here to learn what I can from him, and that's all. I respect Master Drogon. He's a learned man and a great wizard. If such poor licking makes one graduate faster, then I question the worth of Master Drogon's little score. Perhaps it is the school that questions your worth, half-orc. <laughs> For a paladin, you have quite a mouth on you, little girl. Liam, I heard Master Drogon saying that your final test would be coming very soon. Do you think you are ready for it? I... I... I don't know. I'll see when the time comes. A reasonable answer. You are more patient than I would be in your shoes. I bet that Master Drogon will take away Liam's ring for the final test. Ha <laughs> No teleporting about for you. But Master Drogon gave us the rings to keep us safe. They've kept all of us from being killed during our training. And what better way to test if you are ready to leave the nest, eh? What do you think of that, Liam? Ready to lose your ring? Eh, uh, I'm... If Master Drogon believes it is necessary, yes. And if Master Drogon tells you to hop about on one foot, would you do that too? <laughs> Xanos is weak of constitution and constantly in need of rescuing by the ring. I think that's why he values it so highly, I think. Shut up, little dwarf. 
I notice you've no lack of focus crystals to power your precious ring. Better to be safe than sorry, I always say. Do you know what your final test will be, Liam? Has Master Drogon said anything to you? Oh, I'm a warrior. No doubt he'll test my battle prowess to the, to the utmost. Bah! You'll know nothing. Whatever it is, the cunning little dwarf will not make it easy on you. I cannot wait until Master Drogon gives me my final test. Oh, I wish I was in your shoes. For once I agree with the little girl. I came to Master Drogon to learn how to be an adventurer. I wish to adventure. True. I wish something exciting would happen here at Hilltop. Do you hear that? That's the sounds of battle. Come but the Drogon is in trouble. Yes, perhaps that's best. Use it. Everywhere. Come back here and fight. They're running away. Sweating profusely and stirs agitatedly as if caught in the grips of a bad dream. Greetings, friend. Oh, I'm so worried about Master Drogon. Do you think he'll be all right? He should be fine. Don't worry about it. That's nice of you to say. I just hope it's the truth. What? You don't believe Liam now? You're accusing him of being a liar. I, I said no such thing. That's not what I meant at all. <laughs> you are still such a little girl. Mistral's warrior indeed. So many people just try to shield me from the truth sometimes. If I'm ever going to be a paladin, I'll have to face these things one day, won't I? I suppose all we can do now is pray for him. Good luck, Liam. Yes, I imagine so, but who is this person who just came in here? That's it? The little beasts are all gone? Then I shall see to Drogon now. I can only imagine what they did to make him fall. Poison. I cannot tell the time, but I should be able to counter it with my magic. Hold on. Nothing? The poison resists? How can that be? This is no simple toxin these kobolds have used here. How could they have acquired such a poison, I wonder? And why did they come all this way? Just to strike it, Master Drogon, there must be an answer. Um, thank you for your help, but, um... Who are you? I find it more than a little suspicious that some helpful stranger would show up just as these little creatures attack, eh? How rude! This lady aids us without asking for anything in return. Would you repay her with suspicion? Rude or not, I'd like an answer as well. You have remarkable timing, my lady. Of course you are suspicious. I would be as well were I in your shoes. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Ayala Wimpspear. I have been following the tracks of these kobolds for almost two days now. I thought it odd that they would range so far from their home caves in the Nether Mountains. I never imagined they would do something like this, however. As soon as I realized they were headed for Hilltop, I came as quickly as I could. But too late. Why were you following these kobolds to begin with? 
I was just passing through this area, to be perfectly honest. It's my responsibility to take note of strange occurrences and investigate them, however. What do you mean it's your responsibility? I am a harper, as is Drogon. Do you know what the harper is? The harpers. Some kind of secret organization, isn't it? One that meddles in the affairs of others, whether they are welcome or not. That is a viewpoint born of ignorance. We harpers band together to fight evil wherever it arises, even though some may call it meddling. This naturally means that the harpers have many enemies. I suspect one of them is responsible for this attack. I hope I am wrong. I believe I can shed some light on that. Master Drogon! Drogon, you live. Mistra be praised. It was the artifacts they were after. They're stolen. All four of them. I can do nothing. I thought as much. How could anyone have found out who even had them? This is terrible news. Wait, what artifacts are you talking about? When Drogon retired to Hilltop, the Harpers entrusted four dangerous artifacts to his care. We thought this area remote enough that they would be safe. They were. I do not know how they were discovered. We'll have to find out. Those artifacts are too powerful and dangerous to be left in unknown hands. I'll help in whatever way I can. That's good to hear. I will need to stay here and tend to Drogon's poison. The help I can offer is limited until he gets better. Rian, my eldest student, it's up to you. It is vital that you find these items and bring them back. Are you sure, Master Drogon? If this is so important... Only you can do this. You're needed, my boy. You must have courage. This will be your final test. I know that you're ready. So much... Uh, so much relies on you. I know you'll not let me down. I, I cannot... Uh. Drogon! He's passed out from the pain. It's up to you then, Liam. As he said, you must recover these artifacts before they can be put to dangerous use. I will do my best. Do you have any advice? If you need assistance, think of asking Dorna or Xanos to accompany you. The others can remain here and help guard the school. That would be me. I wish I could go with you, Liam. Oh, you're so lucky. And he will be luckier still to have the great Xanos by his side. Get over yourself already, Xanos. Liam will pick whomever he picks, and it will probably be someone he can stand. Yes, yes, as I said. Me! There is also bound to be some equipment here in the school which can help you. See if you can find some. Healing equipment especially. If you can't find potions, healing kits will have to do. As for the artifacts themselves, I can tell you what I know about them if you wish. It's not much, but it might help. Beyond that, all that remains is to go, is to go out into Hilltop and follow the trail of the Kobolds. It should not be difficult. Their passing will have been noticed, I'm sure. I will help you as much as I can, but my first duty is to keep Drogon alive. Whatever this poison is inside him, I intend to fight it. How else can you help me exactly? Well, that depends. Is Drogon still using the teleportation rings he created? If you ask whether or not he still gives the rings to his students, the answer is yes. Thankfully, yes. You needn't get so excited about them, Xanos. They're just rings. You keep that smirk where I cannot see it, dwarf. These rings will save our lives plenty in the days to come. The fact you have them is good. As I recall, the ring uses the energy of a focus crystal to pull you to Drogon in the instant before death, correct? You can also use them voluntarily to return to Drogon's side. Seeing as I'll be wherever Drogon is in both cases, we can use that to our advantage. I should be able to use the connection between the ring and the spot you came from to teleport you back there if need be. I wouldn't advise jumping back somewhere dangerous, but I will at least be able to save you some time. I'm afraid there's not much more I can do to help. Do you have more crystals for the rings? No, of course not. I would imagine that Drogon has a lab around here, perhaps in his room? If you can find it, there might be a way to make more crystals. How is Master Drogon doing? Poorly. 
It takes all the magic I can muster to keep the poison from killing him. I'll do what I can. He's a strong dwarf. I'm sure he'll pull through. I need some healing. I wish I could help you, but until Grogan's condition stabilizes, all my magic is needed just to keep him alive. There is a temple within Hilltop, isn't there? Perhaps there's a cleric there who can provide you with some healing. Alright, I have some questions, mainly about our task. What would you like to know? Tell me about these artifacts. I know a little about these artifacts, but keep in mind that anything I tell you comes mostly from memory. I wish I had more detailed information to offer. Let's see, if I remember correctly, there are four artifacts in total. A mummified hand, a dragon's tooth, a statue of a tower, and a mask. Tell me about the mummified hand. It belonged to a powerful lich named Belferon, as I understand it. The hand was all that was left when he was destroyed. I remember it being said that some of Belferon's power remained in the hand. Perhaps someone is trying to tap into it. Or perhaps one of Belferon's old followers wants him resur resurrected. If that was the case, it would be terrible news. Belferon threatened to destroy Faerun the first time. We certainly don't need him trying again. Tell me more about the Dragon's Tooth. A remnant of the Great Worm Hefe Hephaestagon, a great dragon that also wielded the most evil of the Black Arts. The dragon died long ago, but it's possible that the Cobalts could have some interest in it, seeing as they are of draconic origin themselves. I have trouble believing the Cobalts are the instigators of this theft, however. It's more likely they serve another, perhaps even a dragon aspiring to have Hephaestagon's power. Tell me about this tower statue. I actually do not know much about that. I believe it was found in a desert tomb many years ago, and one of our wizards detected powerful and destructive magic within it. The nature of the magic could not be discerned, however, so it was put aside to be kept safe until more could be discovered about it. I have my doubts that the statue would be of use to anyone. Perhaps its theft was only incidental because it lay with the rest. Alright, now tell me about the mask. That once belonged to a high priest of the Lord of Shadows, I believe, and is imbued with considerable power, though nobody has figured out how to use it. Seeing as the God of Thieves rarely produces items of benevolent purpose, it was decided best to keep the mask safe and out of his followers' hands. Perhaps someone has figured out how to use the mask's power? If so, any amount of mischief could be expected as a result. Why are these items so dangerous? All four of them have considerable power of a malevolent nature, although we have yet to discover any application for any of this power. The fact that the power exists could be tempting enough for some, and it's very possible that there may be someone out there who knows more about these artifacts than we do. The trouble will be figuring out which artifact the thief is in fact interested in, and what they intend to do with it. Considering the nature of these items, it is certainly evil. Why were the artifacts kept here, then? Why not somewhere safer? And where exactly would somewhere safe be? Behind the walls of a keep surrounded by guard? What better way to announce that you hide something of value? No, the Harpers believe that this school was remote enough and nondescript enough to be considered safe from molestation. For many years, that has indeed been the case. Perhaps now you can tell me about the Harpers. You mentioned them, I know little about them. There's not much more to tell, I think. The Harpers seek to maintain a balance in the world, even in the face of those who would abuse their powers. Some claim we are spies, others consider us dangerous meddlers, or even outright assassins. In truth, we are a little of all things when the situation warrants it. You know, it was always our hope that Drogon students might take the cue from their tutor and become Harpers themselves, in fact. What do you think of that? I'd have to think about it. Well, you have plenty of time. It would be too soon to even consider membership in the Harpers, but perhaps this is your chance, no? Can you tell me more about the Kobolds? Only very little. I came across their tracks when crossing one of the mountain paths through the Nether Mountains to the north. When I realized that they had left the highlands and come down into the valley, I became alarmed. For Kobolds to range so far from their home caves is unusual. Kobolds are tiny draconic predators that rely more on their cunning than their strength to survive. For them to be so bold means they either have much to gain, or much more to fear. And perhaps you can tell me about yourself. You want to know more about me? Whatever for, my past isn't important here. I want to be sure you are who you say you are. Drogon recognized me, isn't that enough? He could have just been delirious from the poison. Good point. 
Regardless, you're going to have to take my word for it this once. Now I'm sure you have something better to do. And no more questions, thank you. I should go and get ready. Excellent. I will tend to Drogon then. Return to me when you have discovered anything. Will do. Alright, darts. I don't think they actually have any value, but I'll grab them. And a couple remains here. Gold piece and a phenolope. And spirits. I don't even need to pick that up. Alright. And I am going to end this episode here. We have begun... Well... We have begun the new, the new mission. Oh, she actually closed the door. The, we can already see there is definitely more quality to this campaign than there was in Neverwinter Nights. I believe Neverwinter Nights was probably originally made... I mean, the game itself, it came with a scenario creator, and the original campaign was more a way to demonstrate what the game could do. It showed all sorts of way, and you were supposed to be able to analyze it to figure things out. That said, this one is more of an actual story, and they put more work into it, as you can tell. Ever, we had multiple people talking. We had a freaking cutscene with a lot of detail in it. Already, this is actually very interesting. We'll find out more probably in the next episode, and we'll speak with their future companions. But that'll be in the next episode. So until then, I am Chester44, that is Liam Johnson. This has been a Let's Play of Shadows of Umbrentide, and I shall see you all next time.